We have seen some bonk bhajan, right? Yes. Vibhavari Shesha. Vibhavari Shesha Aloka Provesha Nidrachari Yuta Jeeva Vibhavari Shesha Aloka Provesha Nidra Chari Uta Jeeva Deva Bari Shesha Ala Bolo Hari Hari Mokunda Morari Rama Krishna Haya Griva Bolo Hari Hari Mokunda Morari Rama Krishna Haya Griva Nashim Mahavamana Shri Madhu Sudhana Prajendra Nanda Nashama Narsim Mahavamana Shri Madhu Sudhana Prajendra Nanda Nashama Bhutana Gatana Kaita Bhashatana Jaya Dasarati Rama Bhutana Gatana Kaita Bhashatana Jaya Dasarati Rama Yashoda Dulhala Govinda Gopala Vrindavana Purandara Yashoda Dulhala Govinda Gopala Vrindavana Purandara Gopi Priyajana Radhika Ramana Bhuvana Sundara Bohora Gopi Priyajana Radhika Ramana Uvana Sundara Pohora Gopi 
ಗೋಪಿಜಾನಾಸ್ತ್ರಹಾರಿ ರಾಮಕಸ್ಕರ ಗೋಪಿ ಜನಾಸ್ತ್ರಹಾರಿ ಜನರ ಕಲ ಗೋಪ ವೃಂದ ಪಲ ಚಿತ್ತಿ ವಂಶಿ ಧಾರಿ ಪ್ರಜರ ಕಲ ಗೋಪ ವೃಂದ ಪಲ ಚಿತ್ತಿ ವಂಶಿ ಧಾರಿ ಯೋಗೇಂದ್ರ ಬಂಧನ ಶ್ರೀನಂದನ ಪ್ರಜನ ಪಾಯಿ ಯೋಗೇಂದ್ರ ಬಂಧನ ಶ್ರೀನಂದನ ಪ್ರಜನ ಪಾಯಿ ನವೀನ ನಿರಧಾರೂಪ ಮನೋಹರ ಮೋಹನ ವಂಶಿ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ನವೀನ ನಿರಧಾರೂಪ ಮನೋಹರ ಮೋಹನ ವಂಶಿ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಯಶೋಧನಂದನ ಕಾಂಸ ನಿಷೂಧನ ನಿಕುಂಜ ರಾಸ ವಿಲಾಸಿ ಯಶೋಧನಂದನ ಕಾಂಸ ನಿಷೂಧನ ನಿಕುಂಜ ರಾಸ ವಿಲಾಸಿ ಕಾದಂಬಕಾನನ್ನ ರಾಸ ಪಾರಾಯಣ ಬೃಂದ ವಿಪ್ರೀನ ನಿಭಾಸಿ ಕಾದಂಬಕಾನನ್ನ ರಾಸ ಪಾರಾಯಣ ಬೃಂದ ವಿಪ್ರೀನ ನಿಭಾಸಿ ಆನಂದ ವಾರ್ಧನ ಪ್ರೇಮ ನಿಖೇತನ ಪುಲಶರ ಯೋಜಕ ಕಾಹಾನ 
Ananda Vardana Prima Nikaitana Pula Shara Yoja Kakahama Gopanga Nagana Chita Vinodana Samasta Guna Gana Dhamma Gopanga Nagana Chita Vinodana Samasta Guna Gana Dhamma Yamuna Jeevana Kili Parayana Manasa Chandra Chakora Yamuna Jeevana Kili Parayana Manasa Chandra Chakora Namashura Das O Krishna Yash Rako Vajna Manam Ora Namashura Das Ko Krishna Yash Rako Vajna Manam Ora Vibhavadi Shesha Aloka Pravesha Nidra Chari Uta Jeeva Vibhavadi Shesha Aloka Pravesha Nidra Chari Uta Jeeva Bolo Hari Hari Mokonda Morari Rama Krishna Hayagi Viva Bolo Hari Hari Mokonda Morari Rama Krishna Haya Griva Netai Gaur Hari Bho Hari Bho Hari Bho Netai Gaur Hari Bho Premanande Haribo Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pistaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirusesha Srinivadi Paschachadeva
जय जगन्नाथ पावर एक सौ बद्र की जय नमा ओम विष्णु ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाया नारायणम नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम दैवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुधेरय नस्त प्रयशु वद्रेशु नित्यम भगवत सगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नष्ट की We're reading Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto Five, Chapter Number Two: The Activities of Maharaj Agnidra. Text Number One: Shri Shuka Avacha, Evam Petari Sampravritete. तद उत्साहने वर्तमानो अंद्रियो जंबुद बिबो कासा प्रजा ओसार ओस ओरा सफाद दर्मावेक्षणमाना पर प्रयोग पायाशुक वच एवं पितारी संप्रवृते थे तद उशासने वर्तमान अग्निद्रो जंबुद्विपो खा प्रजा ओर सावदर्मावेक्षण प्रयोगोपायत श्री सुख उवाच एवं पितारी संप्रव्राथी थे तद उशासने वर्तमान अग्निद्रो जंबुद विभो खासा प्रजा ओर सावद धर्मावेक्षा प्रयोगोपायत
Bandages. Shri Sukha Uvacha, Shri Sukha Dev Goswami said, Evam, thus, Pitari, when his father, Sampravritete, took to the path of liberation, Tad Anusmare, According to his order, Vartamana situated Agnidra, King Agnidra, Jambudvipa Akasa, the inhabitants of Jambudvip, Praja, citizens. Ora Savat, as if they were his sons. Dharma, religious principles. Avekshamana, strictly observing. Paryagopayat, completely protected. Sri Sukha, translation, Sri Sukadev Goswami continued, After his father, Maharaj Priyavrata, 
departed to follow the path of spiritual life by undergoing austerities, King Agnidra completely obeyed his order, strictly observing the principles of religion, he gave full protection to the inhabitants of Jambudweep as if they were his own forgotten sons, his own begotten sons. Purport by Srila Prabhupada, following the instructions of his father, Maharaj Priyavrata, Maharaj Agnidra ruled the inhabitants of Jambudweep according to the religious principles. These principles are exactly contrary to the modern principles of faithlessness. As clearly stated here, the king protected the citizens the way a father protects his begotten child. How he ruled, how he ruled the citizens is also described here. Dharma Vikshamana, strictly according to the religious principles. It is the duty of the executive head of a state to see that the citizens strictly follow religious principles. The Vedic religious principles begin with Varnashram Dharma. The duties of the four Varnas and four Ashrams. Dharma refers to principles given by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The first principle of Dharma or religion is to observe the duties of the four orders as enjoined, as enjoined by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. According to the people's qualities and activities, society should be divided into Brahmins, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas and Sudras, and then again into Brahmacharis, Grihastha, Vanaprastas and Sannyasis. These are religious principles and it is the duty of the head of the state to see that his citizens strictly follow these, or strictly follow them. He should not merely act officially, he should act like a father who is always a well-wisher of his own sons. Such a father strictly just a minute. Such a father strictly observes whether his sons are performing these duties and sometimes he also punishes them. Just contrary to the principles mentioned here, the presidents and executives in the age of Kali are simply tax collectors who do not care whether religious principles are observed. Indeed, the chief executives of the present day introduce a kind of sinful activity, especially illicit sex, intoxication 
animal killing and gambling. These sinful activities are now very prominently manifested in India. Although a hundred years ago these four principles of sinful life were strictly prohibited in the families of India, they have now been introduced into every Indian family. Therefore, they cannot follow religious principles. In contrast to the principles of the kings of old, the modern state is concerned only with propaganda for levying taxes and is no longer responsible for the spiritual welfare of the citizens. The state is now callous to religious principles. Srimad Bhagavatam predicts that in Kali Yuga the government will be entrusted, it will be entrusted with Daivi Dharma, which means the occupational duty of rogues and thieves. Modern heads of state are rogues and thieves who plunder the citizens instead of giving them protection. Rogues and thieves plunder without regard for law. But in this age of Kali, as stated in Srimad Bhagavatam, the lawmakers themselves plunder the citizens. The next prediction to be fulfilled, which is already coming to pass, is that because of the sinful activities of the citizens and the government, rain will become increasingly scarce. Gradually, there will be complete drought and production of food grains. Oh, and no production of food grains. People will be, people will be reduced to eating flesh and seeds and, and many good spiritual inclined people will have to forsake their homes because they will be too harassed by drought, taxation and famine. The Krishna Consciousness Movement is the only hope to save the world from such devastation. It is the most scientific and authorized movement for the actual welfare of the whole material society. Om Magyana Timarandasya Yanan Jana Shalakaya Chaksuran Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bayevacha Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnavibyo Namo Nama Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasati Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we're hearing Maharaj Priyavrata is taking Vanaprast and his son Agnidra is becoming the ruler. So it's explained how Maharaj Priyavrata strictly followed the instructions given to him 
the father of Maharaj Priyavrata was, who remembers Maharaj Priyavrata's father? What was his name? Prahlad? Krishna Dharma? What's the name? Pra Maharaj Priyavrata's father? Huh? No. Manu was the grandfather. Priyavrat. What is it? Priyavrat. Priyavrata. There were two brothers, right? Uttanapad and Priyavrat. So Uttanapad and Priyavrat, they were both sons of Manu, right, you're right, Manu. Manu had three daughters, Devahuti, Prachuti, and Akuti, and two sons, Priyavrata and Uttanapad. So Uttanapada, he also took Vanaprast. They brought Maharaj Priyavrata back to become the king. He came back, he had gone off to the to the mountains with Narada Muni, but they brought him back from the mountains. They wouldn't let him be a brahmachari any longer. They brought him back into the world to rule. So as a king he had to get married, he had to have a family and so on. But then later on also he followed the, art, the path of spiritual life accepting austerities, tapa. Austerities mean vanaprastas, retired life. Retired life is an austerity. People, they don't much like austerity. But austerities are purifying. You do austerity, you get purified. Right? People think they want to, they want to enjoy. They want... They want enjoyment, they want to enjoy material life. Material life will be miserable. It always ends in distress. But if you do tapasya, you do some austerities, you can purify your existence and then you can experience real pleasure. Uh, so we will see in this fifth canto, we will hear about Maharaj Rishabdev and Maharaj Rishabdev also he also retired, took Vanaprastha, and before he retired, he instructed his sons. He told his sons, Nayam deho deha bajam nireloke kushtam kamar nahate vid bujam ye te jo divyam putrika yena sadvat sudha yad yasmat brahmashokyam twanantam. Rishav Dev is telling his sons that. Don't worry about sense gratification because that pleasure of sense gratification is there even for the, the animals like the pigs which eat stool. The pigs which eat stool, they're also enjoying material life, eating, sleeping, mating and defending. That pleasure is there even for the hawks which eat stool. So human life is not meant for that. Human life is meant for something better than that. But to get the better thing, you have to do austerity. You have to do tapa. Right? What austerities you can do? We cannot do great austerities like Dhruva Maharaj, Uttanapada's son, Dhruva Maharaj could do austerities, fasting for six months, just controlling, eating only, well even he stopped even eating and he was just taking only air and then he stopped breathing. And when Dhruva Maharaj stopped breathing, then all the universe all began to suffocate because his austerities affected the whole universe. So we cannot do austerity like that. But we can do some austerity, like we observe Ekadasi. We don't eat grains on the Ekadasi day. Don't eat grains and beans. 
We that some austerity. We do some austerity. Chaturmasya, Chaturmasya. We observe. We don't take different things. First month no green leaves. Second month no yogurt. Third month no milk. Fourth month no urdal. No soya. No high protein. No meat. <laughs> right? And no high protein foods. No masar dao and tur dao. Just simple, light. So that's chatur mashya. We observe these things. We do fasting on holy days like Janmastami and Gorpurnima, Nishinga Chaturisi. We observe fasting. So this is austerity, but better austerity is to go out and preach and distribute book. Go out and do Sankirtan, do preaching, go and engage Jagai and Madai. Go to meet the sinful people and give them Krishna consciousness. Or at least we try to give them Krishna. That is austerity. That is tapasya. Jai Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Ki Jai. Austerities are there. Wake up in the morning. Come to Mongo Arti. That is austerity for some people. For other people it's natural. We don't even think about it. It's a, a duty. But for some people it's austerity. We should do it. We should get up in the morning and come to Mongo Arti. Come and see the deities. Come and chant the holy name. This is our duty. Devotees. We have to come to temple. We have to come and see deities. Mongo Arti is the auspicious time. Get up for the Brahma Mahurta. Brahma Mahurta means one and a half hours before sunrise. We have to get up. We have to come to temple and do spiritual duties. So that is some austerity. We have to follow the religious principles. People in the modern age are all irreligious, all faithless people. They don't want to follow religious principles. They'll do all, they want to do all nonsense. But it's our duty follow the instruction of our spiritual ancestors. Just like it says here, Maharaj Agnidra completely obeyed his order. Whose order? Order of his father. So the same way we observe the order of our spiritual father, Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. He gave us the order. Follow the religious principles. Wake up in the morning. Don't sleep late. Get up early. Come to Mongo Arti and chant the holy name all morning. We have to follow this simple program, spiritual discipline. Just like people think, oh, I'm religious, I'm vegetarian. Vegetarian, that's nothing. That's not religious. Even foolish animals are vegetarian. You don't become religious just by being vegetarian. We are not just simply vegetarian. We are Krishnatarian, right? We take Krishna prasadam, food offered to Krishna. That is spiritual. Just to be a vegetarian, that's material. So we, ha we have to encourage people to come to the higher platform, to come to the real standard of religious principles. People in the Kali Yuga are so godless, they don't even believe in God hardly. They hardly ever go to temples. You can see temples are there, temples are empty. Nobody there. What's going on? We build temples and nobody goes. Where are all the people? Oh, they're at home watching television. 
watching the movies. They don't come to temple. They don't chant the holy name. They be become very fallen in the Kali Yuga. Prabhupada said even in India, people are eating meat. Their chicken and everything, they, they will eat everything. As well as, of course, onion and garlic and oh, everything they're doing, they're taking. Now also intoxication is there, alcohol. So many people drunk in India. They're drinking alcohol. You can see a liquor shop, big queue. All the people lined up to purchase the liquor. This is modern India. And the people driving the cars, often drunk. They have to check all the time who's drunk. They give them the breath, test their breath. And so the, the degradation, the effect of the Kali Yuga is very strong. Even in a country like India, which is supposed to be Punya Bhumi. Now it's so fallen. Everywhere people are intoxicated and they're all meat eaters. You have to ask people, you, uh, you, 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 you can ask, we were having the Rathiatra there at Kalkara and we had a question and answer booth. So many people came with questions, so I would ask them, I would question them, are you a vegetarian? There's so many people. No, no, not fully. <laughs> like that, they <you> see. <laughs> it's so rare to get people to be vegetarian. It's so special in India. And Bengali people all eat fish. They say fish or fish is fruit, fruit of the sea. They say all oh, cheaters and. Even people who are vegetarian, they will say vegetarian, they will eat onion and garlic. You can see vegetarian restaurants, they put the big sign, pure vegetarian. But every one of them, they're all selling onion and garlic. So we don't take that kind of food. Krishna doesn't eat onions and garlic. Not only that, but then people are so lazy. They won't get up in the morning. They won't chant the holy name. They won't even take bath. Just to get people to bathe regularly. So we have to push them. We have to remind them. We're so, this is Kali Yuga. So an age of irreligion. But we have to understand See, in the past, they strictly followed the principles of religion. And he gave protection to all the citizens. Are we protected? Probably said nowadays the governments, they just come, they just want taxes. Tax, more tax, this tax, that tax. VAT tax, income tax. Car road tax, this tax, that, so many other taxes they want. They just want to take the money from the people. And you can see what benefit, what are they giving for the citizens? Are they giving much benefit? Well, you could say, well, we have government schools, we have government hospitals. Can they save you from death? Can they protect you? You can see. 5,000 years ago, if, if, the, if the lady had a miscarriage, she could go to the king and complain. There was one Brahmana, his wife was giving birth and she had a miscarriage several times. So the Brahmana came to Dwarka and complained to Maharaj Ugrasena. Like this, I'm in your kingdom. My wife is giving birth, children are being, the dead at birth. What is the good? And Arjuna vowed he would protect. So like that, 
in, the, in other ages, people could do something. The kings would protect the people. If one cow was harmed, Maharaj Parikshit was ready to kill the person. Maharaj, Yudhisthi, uh, Maharaj Parikshit was touring the kingdom and he saw the personality of Kali beating the cow and the bull was on a portion of a leg. Maharaj Parikshit was ready to kill him. So that is Kshatriya. Maharaj Sibi, Sibi Maharaj was approached by a little sparrow. And the little sparrow begged Maharaj Sibi, I'm being chased by a, an, an eagle. This eagle wants to eat me. So he came, he came to Maharaj Sibi and took shelter of Maharaj Sibi. And so when the eagle came, the eagle said, where's that bird, that sparrow, that's my foot. But Maharaj Sibi said, no, he has taken shelter of me. You cannot harm him. So then the eagle told Maharaj Sibi, then you have to pay me for that, the meat, because that sparrow, that was going to be my meal. So you're denying me my meal, so you should give me meat to make up from it. So Maharaj Sibi said, I, I will give you from my own body. And he began to cut flesh off his body. And his, he, was, he had the sparrow on one scale, and he was cutting flesh off his body to equal the weight of the sparrow. His, he was so charitable, he was cutting the flesh from his own body to make up for that bird, because he wouldn't let anybody harm that bird, little sparrow. And actually it happened that he, he couldn't get enough flesh from his body to equal the weight of the bird. He was ready to cut off his own head for that bird. So that is the real Kshatriya. That is the mood of the Kshatriya, that anybody comes and surrenders to them, they will protect him. Lord Rama said the same thing. Vibhishan came to Lord Ramachandra and took shelter of Lord Ramachandra. And Hanuman was doubtful. He said, no, he, well, I don't know. He's the brother of Ravan. Maybe he's, but Lord Rama said, no, anyone who chants my name, I have to give them protection. He has come to me. I cannot deny him protection. So that is the Kshatriya spirit. But the, today, where are the Kshatriyas? There are no brahmanas to guide us spiritually and there are no kshatriyas to protect us. What to speak protect us? Nobody is even protecting the cows. There's not even very many vaishyas. People are exploiting the cows, killing the cows wholesale and loving the dog, taking their dogs everywhere. This is Kali Yuga. Instead of taking care of the cows, they take care of dogs. So we're trying to teach people, we want people to be aware. What is the real duty, the real mission of the human life? We have a human body, we're meant to follow the religious principles. Satyam, Sochyam, Dayatapa. Satyam, truthfulness, socham, cleanliness, daya, mercy, and tapa, austerity. This austerity means controlling the mind and senses, giving up pride. That is a great austerity. Pride destroys austerity. So we get we have to become humble. How to become humble? We, we become humble by surrendering to Guru and Krishna. It takes humility to submit ourselves before, before the Guru and Krishna. But that is how we cultivate humility. We have to go to Prabhupada and beg shelter at his lotus feet. And we have to come before Lord Jagannath and also beg shelter. This, with this humility, then we can cultivate that, that purity which is necessary for austerity. To do tapa, to do austerity. We have to take shelter of Guru and Krishna. And then we can chant the holy name. 
without humility we won't want to chant. People are proud. No, I'm not going to chant. People are lazy. They're, mis they're unlucky. And they're always disturbed. So Srila Prabhupada is elaborating here about the need for good government and good devotees to follow the religious principles. We have a lot to do. Are there any questions? Any comment? Yes, Prahlad? Tilak, a yeah. bluish color? They, they were dark and they were like slightly blackish bluish. I don't know where it's coming from. There are so many concoctions. We always get these things, concoctions. I don't know. I can ask uh, I can ask the devotees in other countries what it, it's all about. I don't know. Blue Blue tea like. Who's putting that on? I mean, some devotees in Malaysia, generally all the uh, Kirtanians. Huh? I mean, uh, mostly I've seen it in Kirtanians, like all the people. <laughs> I don't know. We, the authorized tea like is Gopi Chandan. Gopi Chandan. Some people may put Radha Kund clay. Sometimes people put the clay from Radha which is more black rather than blue. But some people do use that as a tea-like. Clay from Radha Kund. Yeah, yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. That what they're using? Yes, yes. Well, it's okay. Raghunath Das Goswami. Raghunath Das Goswami was a direct disciple of Lord Chaitanya. So he stayed at Radha Kund and he would take the mud from the Radha Kund and put it on his body as tilak. Just like we sometimes, we cannot get Gopi Chandan, so sometimes we get some fuller's earth. There's a thing called fuller's earth. It's a powder which they use for mold and you just add a bit of water and you can make a clay and put the tilak on. So I remember in the UK, we, you know, we didn't have Gopi Chandan. We would just get some of this fuller's, fuller's earth, it was called. And you add a bit of water and mix it up, make it clay, and then you put the tea like on your body. But it's the same purpose. No difference. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes. How to avoid being proud? Yeah, by doing austerity, right? Well, when you do austerity, you mean when we do austerity, become proud of doing austerities. Well, when you do austerities, you do them, you don't let everybody know, right? You don't make an issue of it in front of, oh, I'm, I'm doing my austerities today. I'm fasting today. We, we do it discreetly. You don't, you just like when you give charity, the highest charity is, is done disc discreetly. You don't tell people, you just do it you, secretly. So you should do your austerities also like that, in a dis dis discreet way. We don't make a big issue on it that I am doing my monavrat or I'm, you know, whatever austerity you're doing. We just keep it to ourselves. We just do it. Like chanting the holy name. Do some more chanting. But you don't put, I'm a 64 rounder. <laughs> All right. But, so that's a better way to do austerity. So you don't become proud. You become proud, you go off, you, you want to tell everyone. Yeah. So, we just do these things without making a public show of it. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, any other question? Yes? Okay, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Gorte Manandi.